Madam Secretary, I think we are facing a student loan crisis in America, and let me tell you why. Student loan debt now is greater than credit card debt in America. Mm -hmm. The total $1.3 trillion, over 42 million Americans owns, or owe student loan debt. In the year 2016, the number of defaults on student loan repayments increased by 14% over the previous year. The average amount that students owe when they finish college has been growing dramatically year after year after year. When I look at the Trump budget, the one that you brought before us today, I can find no relief for students who are facing this debt. In fact, just the opposite is true. When you freeze the Pell Grant, you require students to borrow more money to complete their education. When you eliminate the federal work study program, you eliminate an opportunity for students to reduce their debt by working, by getting their education and working. When you increase the interest payments that are going to be paid by students over 10 years by $38 billion, in other words, accumulating interest payments while they're in school, we don't do that to them now, but the new Trump budget does. It means a greater debt at the end of the day. And finally, when you eliminate the public service loan forgiveness for students, those who want to go into teaching and nursing and critical professions don't get a helping hand. They are ignored, and they have a bigger debt. But sadly, that isn't the worst part of what's happened with the new <laughs> Department of Education under the new president. Here's something you ought to think about. The most heavily subsidized for-profit companies in America today are for-profit colleges and universities. 80 to 90% or more of their revenue comes directly from the federal treasury. These are not crafty entrepreneurs. They're people who have learned how to game the government. And the only protection taxpayers have is in your hands. So here's two numbers I'd like you to think about. 9% of students graduating from high school go to for-profit colleges and universities. 9%. Yet, 35% of all student loan defaults are students from for-profit colleges and universities. What's wrong with this picture? 9% of the students and 35% of the student loan defaults? And yet, when we look at your policies when it comes to these for-profit colleges and universities, they're troubling. From the hiring of your counsel, which has already been raised by Senator Murray, directly from that industry, to raising questions as to whether you're going to police the ranks of those schools that are exploiting students across the United States and continue to, whether it's a question of gainful employment so that students don't, don't get so deeply in debt they don't have a chance to pay back their student loans, the defrauding of students by these schools that's been shown over and over again. The question is, what are you going to do about this? And attorneys general across the United States wrote you a letter on February the 22nd of this year, spelling out in detail why your regulation of for-profit colleges and university is critical to protecting students from crippling and debilitating student debt. When I look at the Trump budget and the cutbacks when it comes to student loans, the new burdens that are being placed on students, and the lack of policing the ranks of for-profit colleges and universities, I'm afraid the student loan crisis is going to get worse. Please respond. Well, Senator, thank you. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what your question was there, but let me just say that I totally agree with you that student debt and student loans are a, of grave concern. Um, I talked about that during my confirmation hearing, and uh, I feel no differently now. In fact, I probably feel more strongly about the critical nature of the increasing student debt. So you're your budget increases the interest burden of students. Your budget freezes the Pell Grant so they have to borrow more. Your the budget doesn't budget give them actually, public loan forgiveness. The budget actually gives uh, students a really defi well-defined and um, new way to address their student loans long-term, their student debt long-term long through income-driven repayment plan that would cap the repayment at 12.5% of their discretionary income and after 15 years for undergraduates would be paid off. So it's a really specific plan that will allow students to 
um, address this. But I think the question and, and the issue is a much broader one. And I think that um, in the context of your discussions around a higher ed bill and higher ed reauthorization or starting afresh, um, this is a real area of concern and one to address. We haven't done a good job of helping students to know what their full menu of options are when pursuing higher education. We've, we've segmented out career and technical education in such a way that it seems like it's a, a lesser of, of two in that we've put a higher emphasis on four-year college and university. And I think all of these areas are ones that we have to have robust discussion about as we consider how, what is the proper role of the federal government in supporting students pursuing higher education in the future and with the reality of today's world.